in that group chat and, and tell us uh, where you're Zooming in from. We would love to give you a shout out. My name is Catherine and I am from Michaels and we are so thrilled to have you all joining us here today. Um, we know this is a Saturday and this might be your one free hour away from your kids, your spouses, your work, and we are so honored that you are spending this time with us today. Ooh, Texas, Nevada. Ooh, lots of people today. Nevada, Colorado. Colorado. All right, lots of people are still joining. Um, you know, if you were with us yesterday, welcome back. If this is your first Zoom class with us, welcome. We are so excited to be sharing this National Creativity Day with you. Um, Joe, I know everyone is here really just to see Joe and hear him talk about his stuff and just, you know, he's everyone's favorite. But we, like I said, we're so happy to have you here to help you keep making, keep creating during these crazy times. Oh, San Francisco, Arkansas. San Francisco. Orlando, okay. Nationwide, this is. Ohio. Yeah. Uh, we, this will be recorded, so if you are taking notes and you're worried you're going to miss anything, do not worry. This will be posted just like all of the past um, Zoom classes with Joe and all of our other ones. So if you want to go back and watch any of the previous ones or if you want to go back and watch this one, michaels.com slash online classes, that is where these are going to live. We have a ton of classes going on, not only today, but every day, so please check back often to sign up. We've got Joe with us like every Friday. Um, I might get sick of him, but y'all probably won't. But without further ado, looks like a lot of people are already in. I'm gonna hand this off to Joe. Woo! Thank you guys so much. Get the hands up, wave them. How's it going? I'm here again with another Michael Zoom class. So thank you so much to the people of Michaels for having me back two days in a row. And uh, as Catherine had said, I usually have a class every Friday almost. It's been, been about six, seven weeks and uh, having a lot of fun trying to make the most of this quarantine time and the, the staying at home and working from, yes, you are in my basement. Um, so we have a great class for you today. Thank you to all those that are returning from yesterday's class. For those that missed out, I did, a, like Catherine said, all these classes are recorded, so you can always go back and check them out. Um, this, real quick, was the lesson I did yesterday. These fun little, Catherine, what are they called? Oh, man, always put me on the spot. I had to. Mini canvas tote bag. Yeah, they come yeah. in a five-pack. She just made that up. Yes, that's right. A mini not. tiny tote bag, canvas, all sorts of fun, decorated with Caesar HTV. And I'm using this for my K cups, for my Keurig, my coffee machine. Um, but today, today is a crazy holiday. And uh, Christine had pointed out to me that I'm also competing with a space launch. So thank you for those that chose this route. And uh, that is happening very soon. So very creative, perfect for National Creative Day. So what I want people to do in the chat section right now is what are you doing today that is creative? Um, maybe you can just list the kind of creativity that you like to do, whether you are like for myself, I'll say I'm a musician, I'm an actor, I work with crafts, these are all things that I enjoy to do on the creative end. I want you to let me know what you're doing today or what you, you're passionate about in the creative world. Catherine, let the world know what you're creative about. Uh, I am probably the, the least creative human in the world, but I actually do enjoy making t-shirts and I actually do use Caesar. And okay. the really exciting uh, detail we just learned Starting tomorrow, when you buy five or more Caesar rolls, they will be $9.99 each. So this is a pretty great deal. Make sure that, you know, go online, go to your local Michaels. We've got same day delivery, curbside pickup. So just, you know, go find your store, check if they're open. Hopefully they are. So uh, that's my uh, shameless little plug there. But yeah, I actually, <laughs> my creativity is just with t-shirts. That's literally all I can do. Okay. I see a lot of great ideas. ones. What's that? There's some pretty creative ideas in I, here. So that's what I'm saying. Call them me. Bible journaling. Wow. Some inspiration for her Girl Scout troop. So this is fun for her. 
Awesome, awesome. I'm seeing some great creative ideas happening in the chat. Feel free to keep adding to them as we're going along in this class today. As I mentioned, they're having great deals going on with Caesar rolls happening. This is an example of it. So for those that have been saying the name incorrectly, this is always my lesson number one, how to properly pronounce the name, and that is Caesar. And that is my first lesson. So there you go. If you walk away with something, at least you have that. But we have a big, I, got, I have a lot to show you today. Um, and here is what we're going to be doing. So Michael loves to send me stuff that they typically don't label. And I'm blaming it on Catherine, not Michael's, just Catherine. Um, so for example, this tiny tote bag came in just a group of miscellaneous things. But this was uh, one of the things that was sent. But one that actually came in the packaging that I know what I'm working with is this awesome apron that Michaels carries. So uh, by Imaginate. So these are just blank art canvas. Well, you could really use these uh, aprons for anything, but I'm going to make it an art apron. Um, and it's just white. It's just a canvas type, just the same way as this bag is. So I know I can heat apply onto it. So this is what I'm going to be doing. This was the project that you guys saw in that sign up. Look at how much action is happening on this. It may be backwards. I'm not sure how you're reading this. It looks great. It's good. Look it. Does it look good? Oh, yeah. All right. So I have a lot of Caesar heat transfer vinyls that are layered on top of this apron. And that's what we're going to go over today. And I'm going to try to recreate this one. So off, I have all my cut heat transfer vinyls, and I'll just name off what I'll be using today. So I have some Caesar Black Easy Weed, some Florent Green Easy Weed, some Red Easy Weed Stretch, which is very thin. I'm going to be using this awesome opal, or pearl, I should say, pearl holographic heat transfer vinyl. And then I'm going to be doing using the confetti glitter gold and rose gold glitter. And then I'm going to mix one of these sparkleberry easy patterns by Caesar and all this onto the apron. So I am mixing all sorts of stuff together. Uh, I already have it cut. So for those that have never used heat transfer vinyl or any of the Caesar products, if for the heat transfer vinyl end of it, uh, whether you have a silhouette, whether you have a cricket, you can absolutely cut all of these products I'm using today. Um, you just want to be careful on which product you're using, how to adjust your vinyl cutter correctly. So make sure you look that up, make sure you have a good condition maintenance on your vinyl cutter before you go. The only product I'm using today that you would not mirror, what I mean in reverse when you cut it, would be your easy pattern. So today I'm using these easy patterns and I'm gonna take you through that process, but this easy pattern, you wouldn't mirror it. And I'll explain once we get to that side of it. So you just cut everything on your vinyl cutter, cut most of those in reverse, and then your next step is going to be weeding out your excess. And, and most of you may know about it. Um, and when you do get these rolls, so any of these rolls of Caesar heat transfer vinyls, they're gonna come with the tech sheet. So this is an example of a tech sheet that will come around it and they're gonna be changing like in the future. So they may look a little different down the line, but hang on to this because it has a lot of information that will help you for your particular project, whether it's a, the fabric you're using. Also these QR codes in the middle here will access our Caesar app which is a huge help, helpful tool on uh, looking at the swatches, the heat application instructions. We have cutting recommendations in there. Um, I have a ton of YouTube videos that you can link to that show applications as well. So it's a lot of help. That's obviously what we're here to do. Um, so hang on to those tech sheets if you need to, uh, but we're gonna cruise along. I'm gonna get into the, um, the weeding end of it. But if you guys have any questions while we're going along, please, please, please do not hesitate to ask them as we're live here. Mallory is going to ask them as I go. Um, so feel free to ask any questions. Let us know what you're doing today. I, I still see that we have some awesome feedback coming in. I am going to be using this bad boy today. And if you've been on any of the other Zoom classes I've done, 
This right here is the, you may either see it from that, that spot or this spot. This other direction might be better. Um, so this is the Caesar Craft Press. It is a heat press. It is not available just yet. Catherine, when is this going to be available? We are so excited to let everybody know, finally, without Joe continuing to get me in trouble every time he tries to show this without my permission, but this will be available at Michael's in-store and online starting in early September. So keep an eye out. We are, we are so excited for this, and I know all of y'all have been waiting and asking and begging, and he can finally tell you that it is coming. And for those that are not familiar with this and you are using a home iron or you have the easy press that is totally fine so everything i show you today you can absolutely apply with your home iron or an easy press uh, you just want to make sure that you have the correct temperature you're applying pressure very important with caesar heat transfer vinyls when you are using that now with the heat press it's going to be faster more efficient it's going to have other little tips and tricks that I can, of course, talk about once they are available, and I'm excited to do a class solely on this press once they are available, but I'm using it just to show you what you're going to be able to do in the future to expand your business. So just real quickly, this heat press is a 9 by 12 heat press. Um, the pressure knob is right here, so this is going to dictate on how much pressure we're using. So right there, I know that it has firm pressure um, up at the top. You may not be able to see it we'll, again we'll go into it later on it's got where you set your temperature your time your duration uh so this way you don't need to sit there and count in your head how many seconds you're pulling it or, or holding it down and uh also again making sure you're targeting the temperature we do recommend for our heat transfer bonds. so very very important to remember that stuff but one cool trip tip that i love to show with this is on the weeding process. So for those that have ever used Caesar Easy Weed or Easy Weed Stretch, Easy Weed Electric, any of the Easy Weed line, uh, you guys already probably know when you do weed out your excess material, which is just peeling the, the product that you don't want onto your uh, shirt or whatever garment you're going on, is just peeling it away from your backing. Now our Easy Weed line has a pressure sensitive backing. So it's got that sticky backing on it. And that is actually a big benefit when it comes to the application. Oh, throwing my weeder. Uh, the application, but also on the weeding end. So when you have your heat press ready to go, this is your heating element. So do not touch up here. This lower platen is just a cushion pad but it does retain a little bit of the heat. So what I do to speed up my weeding process is close the heating element onto that lower pad for about five to 10 seconds. And then once that's done, what's really cool is you lay your piece of easy weed and then you can just lift it up and peel away a lot nicer. But I lost one, so there you go. Here's an example of why the pressure sensitive backing and making sure you have a good cut is very important. So if anything does lift up, as you see, what's great is you can lay it right back down, back onto your pressure sensitive backing and you're good to go. All right. So we're gonna cruise along on this. Does anyone have any questions about the heat press? Well, I don't want to go too deep into that. Yeah, we're just seeing a couple any questions? questions about um, do the fabric settings and the degrees come on the little sheet you talked about um, inside the Caesar rolls? Um, on the Caesar rolls, it does have the fabric recommendations, but as for on this one I have, it does have the application instructions for a um, for a home iron. So up at the top I have application instructions and it'll go step by step from cutting to weeding to actually applying with a home iron. So yes, it absolutely has that, but it doesn't have now if you were like I have a silhouette and I want to use easy weed, um, 
what would be my cut setting. It doesn't have that, that technical information, but again, that's what our app has. So if you ever use the Caesar app, we do have that recommendation. Perfect. That was a great question. So again, if you have a large sheet of something, so I have multiple images that I'm using on here. And what I just showed with the fluorescent green, and we did have a little bit of lifting because the cut was not perfect. But uh, that is very, very important when you do use this method, like what just happened again. So I didn't obviously cut this as hot as I thought, but that's all right. So when you get a bad cut, kind of like- What's your like favorite what, cutting machine? Uh, it's a good question. Let's, <laughs> what's yours? Um, I actually have the Cricut Explorer 2. That's what I have. So the Cricut Explorer? Yeah. Yeah, two. Okay. okay. What's everybody else's favorite vinyl cutter? We're seeing Silhouette pop up, um, Brother Scanning Cut. Okay. Cricut. Hey, Mallory, will you flip the camera so we can see him weeding? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I moved Sorry. it down to the table because my, my cutter obviously didn't have the best blade condition at the time of cutting this and didn't weed as friendly as I wanted at that time. And that's why it's very, very important to make sure that you have a good cut, get good condition before you do the heat press trick. But if it is, it does weed a lot nicer when you are on the warmed up lower flat. So we had a little bit of a casualty on the top portion of this, but like I said, what's great about the easy weed line is it does have a sticky backing so we can just lay it right back down. And sometimes we have to doctor it up a little bit. And again, this is National Creativity Day, so that's what I'm doing right here. And I'm gonna weed out my cavities. Joe, oh, do you uh, do you like weeding? Since I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't mind it but I prefer to speed it up, especially when I have a lot of jobs to do. So when you're using the easy weed line or sometimes the glitter line, it's actually really, really beneficial to use that practice with speeding that up. But uh, how many people enjoy weeding though? We are not getting a lot of I'm not a fan of weeding. <laughs> I love it. Lots I'm, of no's. <laughs> yeah. So this is an example like, of the, the holographic. So the holographic is one of the Caesar heat transfer vinyls that using that method is actually not gonna work. Um, we, really, we really recommend it mainly with the easy weed lines. So that's where you'll speed it up. The glitter line, you can do that as well. Um, but the holographic is one where it doesn't have the same sticky carrier so that's really what the important thing to remember with Caesar products is that will also determine whether or not the product is a hot or cold peel. So kind of a vague rule of thumb, if the carrier sheet has a sticky carrier, it can be a hot or cold peel. Um, if it has a static carrier, so a non-stick carrier, it's typically a cold peel. And I'll explain if no people that don't know what the peel means, that's just when we get into the application end of it. Lots of love for the holographic pearl. That, that's Isn't that cool? And this is, this is one I really kind of want to showcase once we get into the application. And because, because my under base for it kind of got messed up, I hope it still works out for you guys. But I do want to explain something about this specific holographic color because it's very, very unique. So right now I'm weeding my glitter pieces, which are super tiny. And a little bit of a rule of thumb, how many people have weeded Caesar glitter or really glitter heat transfer vinyl and you have trouble seeing the cavities or you have trouble seeing the cut lines on it? 
Hey. Yep. We're seeing yes, that is a popular problem. Yes. So we'll let's go to the other shot and I'll just show you kind of real quick what I like to do. Um, so what I do is I have my cut piece and say something like this, like you can't see the cut lines. What I do is I reverse roll it. So if you just take your cut piece and kind of reverse roll it on the side where the cut is, it will create the edges of your cut line to kind of pop up. So when you go back to go read it, you'll be able to see your cut line or your cavity a lot nicer. Does that make sense, Catherine? Yes, that does make sense. But you know what, Joe? I'm seeing a couple questions on explaining what weeding is. Some people have actually never heard of that. And that's literally just the process that you're doing right now, right? Yes, absolutely. And I apologize, but great question. That's what I mean. So please feel free to ask anything. That's what I just did right there. And that was removing the excess or what some people refer to as the negative area that you're not going to apply onto your garment. So that's what we refer to at Caesar as weeding. So weeding is just pulling out like you would weed your garden, right? You pull out all the stuff you don't need. That's what we're doing here. And we want to remove anything that is not supposed to be in there. Um, and in this case, I have- and What tool do you use for that, Joe? A lot of questions about how you weed and what do you use for it? Right, and this is one more Kathy can answer too. I'm using a uh, Caesar weeder, which is currently not in Michael's stores. It's but, my favorite tool, but, but Catherine will let you know when it is. It should also be coming around the same time as that heat press. So uh, I know Joe has very strong feelings about different weeding tools, like very strong feelings. I do. Very, very strong. He feelings. throws some tantrums if I tell him he can't use it. So we've just accepted that he will <laughs> always use the Caesar weeder tool. It I looks, mean, if I'm teaching like a the dental class, tool, the stuff that makes me feel most comfortable. And this Give us one more show of that, Joe. What's that? Let us see that. There you go. There you go. So this right here is the Caesar weeder. Um, I really like it because the actual area that you're going to pick up your excess material, it, it's got a sturdy end of it too. So when you go to pick something up, it doesn't feel flimsy. It also has the curvature at the end that makes it easy to kind of pick into it and lift it up. Um, I've got into weeding wars with other people that try to compete with their tool. And uh, honestly, it's, it's my personal favorite. Uh, I use it all the time, but if you have other sources, some people use tweezers, some people use other forms of picks, um, but this this one is my favorite, and it's not really a biased thing, it's just that I think it's one of the best. Um, so, that was a great question. I hope that cleared up on the weeding end of it. I am done with everything else weeded-wise, I am now getting into the easy pattern area that I want to explain to you guys. Um, so this was already weeded. This is an example of Caesar easy pattern. So it's a patterned heat transfer vinyl, but I, you don't cut it in reverse. You, when you get a roll of this, the easy patterns at Michael's, it's gonna come in the same roll as I showed you with the glitter, but it's all one pattern heat transfer vinyl. It's also going to come with a sheet of this. And this right here is your mask. Now this mask is very important. So make sure you hang on to this. Uh, this is going to be, this is going to make your carrier sheet for your easy pattern. So this is part of your easy pattern package. So once you cut not mirrored on your silhouette or your Cricut, you weed out your excess material, your next step is to use this, and maybe we could switch the other angle for this one. Ready. We're ready. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm peeling off the sticky carrier away from this paper backing. So I'm gonna take this paper backing, I'm gonna set it aside. You don't wanna throw that away, hang on to it. Then on a smooth, flat surface, you're gonna lay your carrier sheet with the sticky side facing up. So the adhesive side is facing up. Now you're gonna take 
your easy pattern and you're going to simply from one end roll it as even as you can across onto your your mask then what you need to do is grab a squeegee now this is one of the fresh brand new styles of squeegees that caesar has uh, we have a felt end to it now and it has the harder end to it um, so if you use a felt end it's not going to create the right pressure this is more for when you use our decal our easy psv product that's at michael's this is for a different world so you want to make sure you use a sturdy edge so if you don't have one of these squeegees you can use any other kind of squeegee even a credit card if you have um, and what you're going to do is start in the center let's go back yep and we'll start in the center of our easy pattern and with force you want to create a bond and draw the air pockets or anything outside so start in the center and move out you don't want to start from one end and drag all the way across because all that's going to do is cause a ripply effect and potentially lose your your transfer so we're going to simply create the bond and then once you get to this point you need to make sure that you peel this off so that backing that was on your easy pattern originally needs to come off right away and this is garbage now what people always ask us is once you have that easy pattern onto your mask and you didn't want to apply it right away what do you do like because it's sticky it's exposed that's why I say save your paper backing. And once you have your paper backing like set aside, you can lay it back over your transfer. And there you go. So now this transfer is good to be pressed. I can set it aside. Does anyone have questions on this? Mallory, we good? A couple questions. Nope, they're coming in um, about what an easy pattern is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I don't, hold on a second. Yeah, so that is a great question. This right here is an example of an easy pattern. So when you get a roll at Michael's, and this is just an example. So what they are, are patterned heat transfer vinyls. So this is a different example than the one I'm using today, but they're both easy patterns. And when you get a roll at Michael's, it's gonna come like this, and it's gonna also come with a sheet of that mask that I use for this. And so what you're gonna do is lay this on your silhouette or your Cricut. You're gonna cut your design, but not mirrored. You're gonna Normal, weed out your excess, and then you're going to do that process we just did here. Is that and why are you not mirroring it? Why do they not? Why do they so, not? The reason you don't mirror it is because the reason we masked it is this back end. So that's the front. That's where we're cutting. Back end is your adhesive. So this is the side that actually is going to bond onto your apron or whatever garment you're going on. So that you're not mirroring it because if you mirror it and then you mask it, then you heat apply it, it's actually going to be reversed. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. But that is an e this is what an easy pattern, just an example of an easy pattern when you get a sheet at Michael's, you can do all sorts of stuff with it. And obviously, any way you cut it is going to inevitably uh, have the effect. It's going to change the overall look of the pattern depending on what you do. So I always recommend to people that use easy patterns to make sure they do it with something that has a bold design. So if you do really fine detail with easy pattern, it kind of negates the purpose of the easy pattern. So you want to do a project that really showcases the pattern itself. So that's what we're going to do today. Any any questions? No, we're seeing lots of shout outs though for animal prints. I guess a, a leopard or a fun pattern would be very popular. Right on. And, and uh, that is quite possible. I think there's a lot of potential with any of the patterns. They're just printed heat transfer vinyls. So 
thank you for those suggestions. We'll definitely keep them in mind. Um, so yeah, no more questions on that. We're going to get right into the application end of it. Okay. So I have two different designs here. Like I said, I did, you know, this is live. This is reality here. And as you can see, I kind of have a little bit of a mistake on my first application, of course, but I'm still going to try and make it happen. I didn't have the nicest cut for this one, but um, we're going to go for it. So here's my apron. Catherine, do you have one of these aprons? Do you even know what they're called? Uh, they're called lovely white aprons by Imaginate. Always put me on the spot, Joe. Unbelievable. All right, guys, You're this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show I'm going to show you how to apply with the heat press. We're going to keep it right here. And what's fun about this is it doesn't have to be placed any particular way. It's up to you how you do the placement. As you saw, I just kind of threw them onto the other one that I did earlier on. That's kind of what I'm going to do here. But I'm just going to show you kind of how quick with a heat press too, we can do applications. So what you want to do first with your heat press is we're going to preheat it. So what I did is preheat in the section I'm applying right now. And preheat not only takes out the wrinkles and moisture, but it also gives you the flat surface for you to do your application. So you wanna make sure your pressure is good, which as you saw, if you have to actually lift it up with some force, your pressure is good. That's a good sign. Um, we so are you mix wash the apron? Did I pre-wash it? Mm -hmm. You need to not. wash any of your garments? Okay. You, you don't have to, but if you do, that's okay. You can absolutely pre-wash if you need to. But what I've told people in the past, if your business is selling this finished good, then typically you're not going to wash something. The customer typically doesn't want you to wash their own garment. Now, if it's yours and you want to wash it first and then decorate it, absolutely you can do it the only thing to be careful with is do not use liquid fabric softener so liquid fabric softener is is not good for heat transfer vinyl so avoid doing that outside of that you're okay but something white like this of course naturally you probably bleach it right Catherine? no not bleach anything with heat transfer vinyl on it so Definitely do not use bleach, do not use liquid fabric softener, wash in normal detergent, wash either warm or cold. And if you want to hang dry it, will kind of re, uh, preserve your overall finish. But if you throw it in the dryer, it's gonna be completely fine. Um, just don't use a really high heat. So great question. Great. We're gonna cruise, like I said, I got a little mess up on this one. We're gonna try it though. So I'm laying down the Caesar Easy Weed Black. What's awesome about a heat press, when you guys are able to do this, and you're using the Caesar Easy Weed, all it takes is a one second tack and lift. So that's right, one second, tack this down, that's a full design too. So this right here is about six inches. So again, that application. Now that's not done. The reason I did that was just so now that I can go line up my holographic uh, pearl. That's right. I'm layering holographic pearl directly on top of my Caesar Easy Weed. I know this is game changer, probably a lot of questions. But what I really wanted to show you guys on this one with this particular color, with this particular product. This is a semi-translucent heat transfer vinyl. So which that means whatever color it goes over is going to influence the overall color. So it's very important to remember that when you see this on the roll or after you cut it, it looks this way. But once you heat apply it over a different color, it's going to influence this overall look. And that's why I wanted to show you. Now, if I would have applied this directly to a white, number one, it didn't really show up as hot. But number two, you wouldn't see a change in it. White would be the only way it's going to look the way it is now. I'm going to place this on a black. 
back heat transfer vinyl, and you're going to see the overall finish of this pearl holographic. Very, very unique. So again, I'm going to lay this directly on top of the easy weed. And yes, you can absolutely do that. Have you ever done that, Karen? You know, I'm not quite the layering master you are, but I don't know. I'm getting kind of excited. Maybe getting some ideas. I mean, like nine who classes. knew? Who knew that you could layer all of these things? I did. Who else knew? You taught me. <laughs> so another question that we get too with the heat press, I'm using Easy Weed and Holographic. Now these are two different product types, which also warrant two different heat application instructions. So holographic, we recommend to apply at 320 degrees and easy at 305 degrees. Now on my press, you didn't see me switch the temperatures between the two. What I always recommend to people is if you are mixing medias like we did today, simply split the difference between the temperatures. So I'm set 312 degrees. So I went right between the 305 to 320 and I was, I applied both these products together. So that's something that's, you can absolutely do. Now, unlike the easy weed, holographic is a cold peel. So take it out of the heating element, give it a couple seconds on a cool flat surface, and then you can peel your carrier away. Now I want to show you guys how much of a difference. See that? Look at what, what happens once that pearl got onto a black color. It just changed the overall effect of it. And you can even see, because this is where it messed up, it actually got onto the white of the apron. So you can kind of see that what it looks like on a white background versus the black background. And then any colors in between it's going to influence that overall effect. So what do you guys think? Loving, that, cool? Joe. Loving the holographic. Loving it? All right, right on. So again, that was the Caesar holographic pearl. Now, the other question people get, can I tack my other transfers, even though I'm using this area to put another design down, what about this? Can I press on it again? Absolutely. Don't worry about it. That's what we're using cover sheets for. Um, it's okay to, to put more application onto it. You just don't want to cook it for too long. Um, and obviously with the Caesar heat transfer models, the applications are pretty quick. So don't, don't worry if you do have the transfer on your heat press, if you need to use a different area. So now this is another, this is a very big, this is the biggest part of this whole apron because we're mixing three different products together. So my big under base again is going to be the black easy weed. Just like before, I'm gonna simply tack that down for a second and peel hot. Now the big benefit with that, with easy weed, the one second tack, for those that actually use the Caesar easy weed for shirts, and you do stuff with cotton or anything that, that um, may have a potential to actually shrink under high heat, that's the benefit of the one second tack, is if you are layering multiple layers of easy weed on a 100% cotton t-shirt and you're under the high heat of the heat press, just like throwing that cotton t-shirt into your dryer, it's gonna cause it to shrink up a little bit. Um, so with a one second tack, it's not gonna cause your garment which is going to allow you to find your proper registration of all your other layers. So for those that have ever tried to layer any products and then you get the last layer and it doesn't line up right, that's because your garment shrunk. So what's awesome about this, the one second tag doesn't allow enough time for your garment to shrink. So if you have three colors, that's three tags and then you line it up perfectly, and then we go back and press it for the entire duration. You still got to make sure you press it for the full time. So I just tacked that down for one second. And now what I'm going to do, I peel my easy pattern design off of my paper backing. I'm going to lay my easy pattern directly on top of my easy. 
And again, this is, this is just what I do. Not everybody does this, but I will also tack my easy pattern down for a second because the carrier sheet of the easy pattern is like the carrier sheet of the easy. It's pretty similar. So I just tacked my easy pattern down one second. So two seconds so far. Now, real quick, for those that are using easy patterns by Caesar, this carrier sheet, hang on to it. You can use it more than once. I don't recommend using it more than twice because it will lose its adhesive, but you can save this and use it again for another easy pattern project. So and Joe, if you're heating. Joe, we have a question about heating up. If you're using an iron, would you just press down for one second as well? The irons are tough. I, the irons have too many variables in it. I'm sorry that I can't confidently say it because again, it depends. The, the big trifecta here is the correct temperature, the correct pressure, and uh, the even pressure, I should say. So, so even pressure, temperature. With a home iron, um, the pressure is a huge variable. Your temperature is kind of a variable. Uh, and depending on what the platen looks like and what kind of surface you're pressing with, that may cause it to be uneven. So that's, it's hard to say a confident answer for that. So I do apologize. No, that's, that's why we're here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to show you something that you get to look forward to once the heat press is ready and you get to do this kind of stuff to speed up your process and make it a little bit more efficient. Uh, so yeah, great question though. And this is, again, this was my mask I used for my easy pattern. I put it back on the paper backing. Again, save it because those rolls at, easy, uh, at Michael's of the easy pattern come with a smaller sheet of mask than the actual easy pattern. So it is kind of, uh, it, it is for the purpose for you to use more than once. So hang on to it. Uh, we'll set that aside. Now, I'm gonna be layering two colors of glitter onto my easy weed. And again, just like the easy weed, just like the easy pattern, I'm going to tack my glitter down for a second and peel hot. I'm gonna do that and then I got one more. And I'm just using regular parchment paper as my cover sheet right here. So even if you're using a home iron or an easy press, parchment paper is perfectly fine as a cover sheet. Now, I just tacked four different colors, four different products down for one second. Again, it's very important to go back and press for the entire duration. So I'm gonna press this all for about 12 seconds and that's going to bond all four of those products down at one time. Any questions so far? Just ready to see, excited to see. Uh, I can't let you get the, the full effect just yet. We're going to keep cruising. I got one more Joe, piece. are you blushing? Am I? Are you blushing or is it that heat press? No, it's that heat press. <laughs> you guys got to know this is like directly, this is the heating element and it's right near my face. Do not go that close to it because it does, it, it, it's hot. I'm at 312 degrees. It's, uh, it's just the name of the game. So this the one joke. is... What's that? One question. Sure. Um, uh, can you wash your design without losing um, afterwards? Say that again? If you wash your apron after you're all finished and done, will you lose any of your design by putting it in the washing machine? No. So, okay. Good, great question. Now, it's not recommended to wash uh, under 24 hours of pressing. So after you've pressed it, wait 24 hours before you wash because that really lets the adhesive solidify. Um, number two, if you do see lifting after you washed and dried, I can tell you right now as somebody that's been an educator for Caesar for over six years that 
98% of the time, the reason anything lifts after it's washed is because you didn't have enough pressure. So it's very, very important to make sure that with any of the Caesar products that you have proper even pressure when you are applying. It's super important, especially for things that you are gonna wash. Or once you have it applied correctly, the washing, I would never worry about. I have garments that I've worn literally for the six years I've been at Caesar, and I've never had anything lift up. So you shouldn't have any problems with that. But if you do have any lifting or anything comes up, I can tell you right now that when you call us at Caesar, we are going to walk through the process of how you applied it, and we're going to ask you what kind of application um, did you use, whether it was a home iron, easy press, or potentially a heat press, is very, very important to make sure that your pressure is good and even. I can't stress it enough, but great question. Great. I'm not gonna worry about this. I promise you I'm gonna wash this, this uh, apron over and over again, and I can confidently tell that nothing is gonna fall off. So, great question. Now, I just have uh, two more quick Quick applications for this apron. I decided to throw in Easy Weed Stretch because it's one of my personal favorites. One thing that for those that kind of know our products at Michael's, uh, there is Easy Weed and Easy Weed Stretch. And we get the question all the time, like, what's the difference? When would I want to use one or the other? Um, the only difference is that Easy Weed Stretch is a little bit thinner than Easy Weed. Um, but the other difference is the finish. I am more of a, I mean, despite what I'm wearing right now in my shirt, which is a product, but uh, it's a little bit flashy, a little bit shiny. I like the matte finish of it. Uh, so Easy Weed Stretch has a matte finish, which gives it more of a muted ink type finish. Uh, the, the Easy Weed has more of a semi-gloss finish. So if you want a little bit of a shinier finish, Easy Weed is a great option. I like stretch because it is uh, the thinnest heat transfer vinyl that we have, the matte finish, the way it feels, the way I can work with it. That's, this is one of my personal favorites. So I just kind of decided to throw it in there. So just like easy weed though, you can do the same thing. We can tack that down for a second and see, maybe not. One casualty. Now again, this is another important thing about stretch and I didn't, I, you know, I just hate my words, pressure. So with stretch, because it's a much thinner heat transfer vinyl, it requires a lot more pressure. So what I'm gonna do is crank my pressure down a lot more and see how I have that pressure like that. That's what we're talking about. So it takes a lot more pressure with easy weed stretch to see one second tap. So I'm going to decrease that a little bit. And now this is Easy Weed Fluorescent, which these colors are really bright. A lot of action for anybody that ever uses uh, black lights, if that's still a thing. They're really cool under black light. They flash a lot. Um, they just kind of have that very vibrant look to it. So I always like to kind of incorporate the fluorescence as well. And these aren't really being layered. I'm uh, just kind of placing it inside my uh, full on design. And again, that was my last. So I'm going to press that for the full duration. So 14 seconds and it's going to cook the easy weed stretch layer and the fluorescent layer. And like I said, the rule with any of the easy weeds, you can wait till it's hot or cold to peel the carrier. Obviously, I enjoy peeling it right away. Now, is everyone ready to see the finished product? I think we're ready to go. I think they're ready. Are you guys ready? Okay. Lots of yeses. Lots of yeses. Here we go. What do you guys think? Ooh. Ooh. Pretty sweet. They're loving it. So is let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different Caesar key transfer vinyls 
onto my decked out apron. So this is my art apron. And like I said, all the potential that you guys can do. I just put this up right before I had to get my class description to them. So this is absolutely something you guys can do and make however you'd like and deck it out however you'd like and be experimental with any of these heat transfer finals, which is what we love to see at Caesar and, and get to see all the different projects that you guys do use with any of our heat transfer finals. Um, and that's what today is all about, right? National Creativity Day. So we really, I would love to see what you guys come up with. Um, so feel free if you guys want to. Again, we are partners with Michaels, so we're just here to help any way we can. But feel free to follow us on our social medias. We're uh, all over Facebook, Instagram. I have a Facebook group, and I really love to see what customers do to share their inspiration, their creativity, help each other out and learn. Obviously, that's the biggest part of all of this. We want to learn new tips, new tricks, show people new things that they're trying out. And a lot of this is, is, is experimental, right? So um, if something works out, I'd love to see that. So please, please leave any of that feedback and, uh, um, and any kind of project ideas that you guys have because it helps me too with any of these videos that I do and stuff you want to see. Uh, we love to hear any kind of feedback regarding that. Uh, but this was a project for today. So I hope you guys really enjoyed what I showed you. I hope you learned some stuff. As you saw, even as somebody that's been in this business for 14 years, you still make mistakes. So you got to learn from them. And then when you're in the pressures of being live and you got Catherine looking at you weird and, you know, there's a lot of pressure. So thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this, this lesson. I hope you saw last week's. I want to show you another outside of the box. I was pretty pleased. Uh, if you do follow the Caesar North America Facebook page, uh, we do a lot of themed projects and every week is a different theme. So this week's theme was organize it. And the project that came up with was we're in quarantine, right? So we're coming up with all these cool ideas and uh, goals and stuff like that, that we have right now while we're sitting at home. And I was like, well, I should organize it, put it down in a journal. And so I thought it would be a cool project to deck out a journal. So this right here is just a, it came with this Serape, that's all it was, was blank. But I actually decorated it with Caesar glitter. So this is the lemon sugar pattern back here. And then I used our galaxy black on top of it. And it's got that effect, it's really, really cool. And then on the back, I used more glitter and I used our rainbow coral and uh, yeah so I decked out my own journal so this was a project that I did live on our Facebook page we love to see this kind of stuff new outside of the box ideas so please feel free to uh, join us for that fun as well and I'm here almost every Friday uh, doing a class so I'd love to see you guys back here any questions any last minute questions I think, I think if you could show us the holographic um, up close, that seems to be very popular, the final piece on that. Yeah, absolutely. So this, I want to, I think I have a, I'll see, one second. I just want to show you the difference. Because when you get, when you get the, the pearl holographic from Michaels, this is what it looks like with the carrier sheet on it looks like this you obviously if you put your finger like you can see my thumbs it is translucent it does have a little bit of a transparency on it um and so when you put a solid color on the background like we have here with the black look at what it changes to the color very cool isn't that cool and it's got that flashy look to it anyways and when the light hits it and I'm just down in my basement. So imagine you guys out outside in the sunlight, you know, to get the different reflectives of other sources of light, it does make all the difference. And the color underneath it will also dictate the overall effect. So very cool, right? And that's what's fun about a lot of holographic, but this one's super unique. The other holographics are really cool. And I'm sure a lot of you have probably tried them. And they do have, I may have like a, an example of a little, um, 
maybe not. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm limited on what I have down here. But uh, they do have an already built-in kind of speckled effect to it. Not like glitter. It is different. We have a ton of different options of colors, and Michaels has a ton of them. It's just this, this pearl is is very unique with the overall finish of it. So, um, yeah. What do you guys think? Awesome. I thank you guys so much. Thanks, Thanks guys. Have a wonderful Saturday. Appreciate it. Enjoy the other. Bye.